सो हेलो गाइज ये वी हैव क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी फाइव फ्रॉम चेक योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग एक्सरसाइज ऑफ द चैप्टर रोटेशन फ्रॉम पाथ फ्रेंड सो आई लेट्स कट द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट टू आइडेंटिकल यूनिफॉर्म कोन्स ए एंड बी कैन रोटेट फ्रीली अबाउट द फिक्स सेंट्रल एक्सेस प्रेसिंग अगेंस्ट ईच अदर यूनिफॉर्मली इन दियर एंटायर टेपर्ड लेंथ एज शोन इन द फिगर इफ द कोन इज रोटेटेड विद अ कॉन्स्टेंट एंगल लॉस्टी ओमेगा ए हाउ मच एंगल लॉस्टी विद द कोन बी अल्टीमेटली एक्वायर टू ड्यू टू द फ्रिक्शन बिटवीन द कोन्स so if you want to uh, give it a try yourself uh, you can do it now so yeah, now uh, let's first look at the hint so even if the in the final states slipping won't uh, stop between the cones so if you want to try it again with the hint uh, you can do it now so yeah, now let's look at the solution so here so first of all let's try to see what exactly is happening over here so here as the cone a starts to rotate uh slipping will start at all the points on the surface and cone b will start rotation in opposite sense so basically what i'm saying here is that uh due to the as this uh, cone is rotating in this sense the cone b will ro start rotating in this sense now but as we know that the velocity of the point is proportional to its distance from the axis of rotation so the velocity of all the points on the surface of the cone won't be same so here uh, uh, we clearly know that the distance of uh, speed of any point will be omega uh, about the axis times the distance from the axis so here that's what i have said here and uh, so from here what we can say is that the velocity of all the points on the surface of the cone won't be same uh, and uh, we also know one thing for sure that uh, this system finally achieves a steady state so let's consider uh, the uh, situation at steady state So here I have assumed the height of the cones to be h and the radius of the cones to be r. So and uh, I have assumed the omega angular velocity of uh, the cone b in steady state to be omega b, and I have assumed the points of apex of the cones to be m and n respectively uh, for cones b and a. Now here we can observe that uh, uh, at point m the particle on cone a will have some finite velocity while the particle on the cone b will have zero velocity so here what i'm saying is that at this point the uh, point which is on the cone a will have some velocity which is which will be omega a times r and the velocity of the uh, point on cone b which will be this apex will be zero and similarly at point m the velocity of point uh, velocity of point which is on the cone b will be omega b times r and that of a uh, point on cone a will be zero so that's what uh, i've written here so what we can conclude from here is that even in steady state slipping must occur and at end m cone a has some velocity while at end n cone b has some velocity so at some intermediate point on the cones no slipping should occur let's call this point to go so what i'm saying here is that at this uh, point the velocity of cone a is higher and at this point the velocity of cone b is higher so at uh, so the velocity of cone a is uh, varying from uh, some omega a times r to zero and that of b from zero to omega b times r so uh, at some point on the uh, slant height uh, their velocity should be uh, equal so i have called this point o now what what more can we say about this point o so uh, now on the points before o towards m on these points velocity of point on cone a is larger which we can clearly see as the uh, it has not reached an equal point and this has the points on cone b will have zero uh, less velocity in comparison to that of on cone a and while on uh, points after o towards n velocity of point on cone b is larger so that is also very clear from the above statement so what we can say from here is that due to the friction forces on cone b before o it is being rotated in the direction it is rotating while the friction force is after point o are retarding it so uh, what i'm saying here is that due to the friction force in this region the cone b is accelerating while the due to the friction force in this region the cone is retarding this can be seen clearly from the uh, difference in velocities so uh, what we can say from here uh, so first of all let's try to find the uh, position of point o in terms of the angular velocities of the two uh, cones so here i uh, i have assumed that the point o is at a distance x from the vertex m and uh, so by similar triangles this length will be xr times xr over h so the velocity of this point with respect to cone b will be omega b times xr by h 
while uh, with respect to cone a it will be omega a times this length which will be r minus r minus x r over h so that's what uh, written here so here we get our first expression our first equation now uh, to find the accelerating and retarding torques let's consider a small part dy at a distance y from the vertex of cone b so here i have assumed at a distance y a small part uh, of length dy so now as it is given in the question that the two cones have been pressed uniformly against each other the force should also be uniformly distributed over y as y is just a linear component of the slant height slant length of the cone so here what i have said is uh, the force is uniformly distributed over this slant length right so uh, it should be indirectly be uh, uniformly distributed along this length too because this length is just a uh, component of uh, this uh, slant height so from here i have uh, named uh, let i have assumed df by dy to be lambda where f is a friction force at the surface of the cone so what from uh, so the torques we get from here writing the expression for torque uh, so the uh, lambda is df by dy times dy gives us the small uh, d uh, df force uh, acting tangentially at in this region and uh, multiplying it with this uh, this length gives us the torque which is yr by h so this is the accelerating torque so this will be vary from 0 to x as i said and x is the uh, x coordinate or the uh, position coordinate of this point o at which there is no slipping so this region is accelerate this torque is accelerating it and similarly with the limits from x to h this region uh, this torque is actually decelerating it so in steady states these two should be equal so finally what we get is x square equals to h square minus x square where h, x is the position coordinate of the po point o so from here what we get is root 2 x equals to h so substituting this in the uh, first equation we got what we get is omega a times r minus r by root 2 equals to omega b times r by root 2 So finally, what we get is omega a times root two minus one equals to omega b. So yeah, this is the final answer for this question. Thank you.